Hello everyone and welcome to another interesting Windows demonstration. This time we're going to show you how to set up the network load balancing in Windows Server 2019. Well, in front of you and I, I have this virtual machine which is running the Windows Server 2019 standard evaluation. I have another virtual machine with Windows Server 2019 that's Server Core. Uh, so uh, let's get started. And the very first thing is that we're going to provide you some uh, useful information regarding the network load and balancing. Uh, in general, the high availability, as we know, is one of the major key uh, points to provide continued services nowadays. Uh, well, it helps to increase the production and reputation of the service providers. Other than that, nowadays, everyone wants the required services on demand. Organizations use different technologies and solutions to provide high availability and redundancy. With that said, network load balancing is one of the most popular high availability and redundancy feature used in Windows-based networks. Thus, with this demonstration, we will explain and provide the instructions, uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, instruction uh, to install and configure network load balancing in Windows Server 2019. So let's get started. I'm going to go to the command prompt to, first of all, uh, have a look over here, something. Well, I will look at the IP address, IP config. I have two interfaces, one for internet, one for the uh, internet. Uh, I'll see if I can ping the other machine, 172.16.0.70, okay, to make sure that the other machine is also running because uh, we will be using two machines in order to set up network load balancing. Other than that, uh, I'll go to the Windows Administrative Tools and see whether I have the Internet Information Services installed if yes uh, i think i have in both machines so i'm going to run this service over here that's good I close this one and now we will go to the uh server manager why because we need to add now the load balancing and the load balancing is actually a feature okay so we'll wait until this one refreshes over here okay Let's check it now whether it came. Not yet because I don't see the roles over here. It's taking a little bit of time. Okay, yes, so we're good. Now, uh, we will proceed with the add roles and feature wizard in order to add the network load balancing. So hit next over here. Okay, so this is our server from the pool. Okay. Uh, and then we will proceed with the next. Okay, so we're at the roles, but over here we don't have the network load balancing. Thus, we go with next. Features, then we will find over here the network load balancing. Let's scroll a little bit down and then locate the network load balancing right away. So here it is the network load balancing. Uh, it comes with the features such as the administration tools. We hit add features over here. That's good. And proceed with the next. Okay, so these are actually the stuff that so far we've been selecting regarding the uh, network load balancing. Just for information, uh, we will click restart the destination server automatically for if it's required and then we confirm and approve that one. So if the network load balancing feature requires the uh, restarting, then yes, we will restart it. In fact, the add roles and feature wizard is restarting for us. We hit install. Okay. Well, this is kind of a situation that uh, we often uh, encounter and then I, I myself say that sit back and relax. But I will use to provide a few more information regarding the network load balancing. So in general, the network load balancing uh, uh, distributes the traffic across several servers. In, in our situation, we have the Windows Server 2019 DC and the Windows Server 2019 SC. DC for domain controller and SC for server core. Okay, 
uh, what else because uh, uh, it is distributing the traffic across all the service using what using the tcp ip networking protocol thus ne uh, network load balancing uh, is particularly useful for ensuring that as as we see this one has restarted the 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 the, the server okay so network load balancing feature requires a restart of the server okay in fact it was not a restart but it, it was actually a, some sort of the interruption timeout in the in the uh in the uh, networking why because network load balancing actually uh did yeah, impacted the, the the network okay so uh, i was i was saying that the network load balancing is particularly useful for ensuring that startless applications such as the web servers running internet information services are scalable by adding additional servers as the load increases okay to get the job done this is over so close here let's see this notification here what we have here it is just indicating that the installation has been completed successfully okay and then we might go along and then uh, look the the nlb network load balancing within the administrative tools or even from here okay let's see over here network load balancing manager we'll close this one and i'm very much interested to check it within the uh, administrative windows administrative tools okay so here i need to find the network load balancing okay here it is this guy here okay well it's uh, the user account control is asking us for a permission why because most probably and for sure this particular service is touching the registry of the windows uh but uh, we're, we're safe because verified publisher says microsoft windows so we approve it and we are here we are now at the network load balancing let's actually provide click that one but it's not being expanded okay so now let's let's have a look at what other steps we need to complete over here so we actually have now configuring the network load balancing okay so first of all we right click over here this particular server and go to the new cluster okay clicking to the new cluster what it does is asking for an ip address okay and then this particular ip address is that uh le le let's let's first try okay connect to one host that is to be part of the new cluster and select the cluster interface okay so we have an option either we'll go with the dc or the sc so we will go with the dc when srv to k19 dc okay let's get connect with this one okay so intranet and internet we will use the, the intranet and then proceed with next okay so this is actually priority unique host identifier dedicated ip address so we are now at the second step in the second step what we do okay uh provide actually the 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 host parameters okay uh because the nlb node will reply to client qu queries first uh, so we need to actually uh, ensure that before we go to next the default state is started which is started in fact and that is good for us so we hit next over here so i've, I've verified the one because we've been selecting this one here okay and that's why that ip address was available there okay i might go along over here and add another ip address but that would be from the windows server 2019 sc and that's not part of this one okay so hit next here okay the cluster ip addresses are shared by every member of the cluster for load balance of the first ip address list consider the primary cluster ip address and use for cluster heartbeats so now we are in the position where we need to actually provide the useful information regarding the ip addresses okay so what we'll we'll do over here provide actually the ip address of the other server and that is actually the one that we've said earlier the one with the 
the the one with the uh, Windows Server 2019 SC. Okay, let's move along and then provide that one right away. Okay, so and here. Okay, an IP version four, but we will provide all of the IP addresses. Okay. Ten. Subnet mask is by default. Okay. Okay. Yes. So I was correct that we need to provide the other. That's good. So we go with next now. Okay. And then it is actually over here specifying whether we with the cluster operation mode would be unicast, multicast, or IGMP, IGMP, uh, IGMP multicast. Well, we, we, we will leave it as it is by default and proceed with a next. Okay, so we are at the defined port rules. Well, we will actually accept the default because it says TCP and UDP traffic directed to any cluster IP address that arrives on port 0 through 65,535. The, the, the numbers of the ports is balanced across multiple members of the cluster according to the load weight of each member. Client IP addresses are used to assign client connections to a specific cluster of host. Okay, so we finish over here and see what else we need to do over here okay so wait a little bit until that particular uh, refreshment gets done over here okay okay so we see that now the, the service has been started and then so far so good we are so we see that we've actually added this one over here okay uh, in terms of the configuration so far okay and then so far it tells us that this is actually a, a good good work okay so now we need to add the host to the cluster okay how we do that we need to right click this one here and then add host to cluster okay so now we actually look at which particular IP address we will need to add it over here. Okay. So now we will add the IP address of the Windows Server 2019 Server Core. 172.16.0.70. Connect. Okay. I'm waiting for the connection to take place. So this thread was already part of this cluster. Okay. What about the 172.16.10? Connect. The specific host is already part of this cluster. So both both the uh, hosts we have actually a part of this cluster. So we will cancel this operation. And then coming over here, actually we see that that we've already added this one over here and it's visible. Okay but uh because we have actually set up the 172.16.070 is actually over here at the top okay so we need that to see whether we need some other things to to provide over here okay in order to ensure that everything is actually actually properly configured uh, we will go now to the internet information services because we're very much interested to uh, restart the service there. But know that we don't have a, a site over here apart from the default website. Okay. So restarting, we will do it from here. Although we might have done it from here as well. Okay. So let me just check this one here. Okay. Manage website and restart. Okay, so now that we've restarted this particular uh, particular uh, uh, server, web server, it is good now to add a virtual directory. So we will add the virtual directory, uh, which are we're going to map it to the uh, NLB uh, uh, stuff. Okay, configuration versing. So right click over here, okay, and then add virtual directory. This virtual directory is going to be 
uh, for instance, like NLB site. Okay. Uh, and then as far as the physical location, we will then see somewhere on the data. Okay. So let me just uh, first navigate that one. Okay, so I'm here. I have data here, and here it is. I have the web test, or I can go and make new one, make new folder, and then that one, or this one should be part of the 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 the, the, the inet pub. Okay, so we will make it part of the inet pub, and then ww root. Okay, so we're good over here that's good and then uh okay this is done so far so, so the internet information services is now correctly configured with the with the uh, uh, uh the, the the website now we need to test uh so to see whether we can access the 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 the, the website okay uh, but we will check with the uh, with all of the possible elements that we have, primarily with the IP addresses. So if we go localhost, okay, we have this. If we go with the intranet, it's working. If we go with the IP address of the server. Is 172.16.0.10 okay it's working and we will be very much interested to test it with this one 172.16.0.70 because we've con configured the, this one within the network load balancing uh, and that is the server core okay so 70 okay it's working even with the 70 it's working as well so the the first verification is telling us that we have actually uh, 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 tested uh, successfully the, the 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 network load balancing. Okay, so now well, let us close the Internet Explorer, and then uh, let's let's uh, uh, from the network load balancing manager uh uh actually do some other testing on the on the ethernet uh, on the on the ethernet uh, test okay if we try to suspend and see whether that the the the, the client is going to provide the, the this particular website okay because remember we have a cluster there okay so closing this one okay and then coming here we are within the network load balancing okay and then over here uh, we will go to the control host and then suspend. Let's check this one. So this one is the status pending. Okay, host is suspended is telling us over here. And we see this, this information within the log. Okay, now we will go to the Internet Explorer and see are we going to receive the intranet again. Let's check intranet is coming okay so uh, uh it's not necessarily that it should come from the uh, because this is the windows server 2019 and uh, dc this machine where we're working because the other one this one is from the server core but because we've created a cluster and then did the network load balancing so now we actually the 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 intranet is coming from the second one because this one is actually being suspended okay so control host and start then the, the status should should change as well okay now that we were able to test the network load balancing and find out that when we actually uh suspended the one host or one node the other node such as like like the first node was Windows server 2019 dc suspended and then we uh, then we were actually receiving the website from the from the from the uh, the second node. And this concludes this presentation and demonstration. And I hope you've enjoyed. A big thank you from myself.